Welcome back. This is the Marangoni Effect Part 2. We're working with droplet decomposition. Very cool stuff. Droplet decomposition is an amazingly beautiful application of the Marangoni Effect. Before we go and take a look at all the cool things that we can do, we are Destructive Creativity. We exist for you, for science, and for fun. So if any of those things appeal to you, make sure you subscribe and drop us a like. Because we have new content coming out every single week, and we have a lot of fun, and you're going to have a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the Marangoni Effect? The Marangoni Effect was first observed by Carlo Marangoni, an Italian physicist. He discovered it in 1865. Today, we are going to be looking at specifically Marangoni bursting. Or evaporation-induced emulsification of a two-component drop. What does that mean? It means we're going to make some really pretty colors and explain it later. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to say before we get going here, some people think that this is a chemical reaction based on the different materials that we're mixing, but this isn't. This is purely physical properties of each component that we're using, which is very cool. All right, first off, we're going to need some oil. We're going to need some isopropyl alcohol, food coloring, and some water, which is around here somewhere. Next step is we're going to make our mixture of isopropyl alcohol, food coloring, and water. So the percentage of isopropyl alcohol to water will determine how pronounced your effect is. Uh, the more alcohol you use, the more droplets are gonna be expelled, and but they're gonna be smaller. So experiment, this is really fun. We're gonna make three mixtures, one with just water and food coloring, the second with isopropyl alcohol and food coloring, and the third one will be the correct mixture of isopropyl alcohol and water and food coloring. And we'll show you the effects of all three of them. We're gonna show you the, just the water mixture. Water on oil with food coloring. Absolutely nothing happens. Because we're mixing polar and non-polar molecules, uh, which is the water and the oil, they just separate and it's just one big blob. Next up will be the alcohol and blue food coloring. And it just spreads out. That's it. Huh. I knew that nothing was going to happen with both of those, but if we mix the two of them together, so all that's in this one is the water and isopropyl alcohol, put the lid back on, with some food color. Now let's drop it out and see what happens. So what's going on here? While you guys watch this amazing colorful display behind me here, I'm going to explain it to you. So that drop is a mixture of water and alcohol. Alcohol, as we discussed previous, has a higher vapor pressure than water, which means that it has a lower surface tension and it evaporates much faster. That first drop that gets dropped into the bath of oil is thicker in the center than at the edges, which means that the alcohol is going to evaporate much faster around the edges of that drop than in the center. So what does that mean? If there's less alcohol along the edges, that means there's more water, which means more surface tension. And as we discussed last week, if there's more surface tension, that means that there will be a flow going from the lower surface tension to the higher surface tension. So from the inside of the drop, to the outside. And it's that Marangoni flow that forces those tiny little droplets away from the center of that drop. And because the alcohol is still evaporating and the Marangoni flow is still working, it's going to continue until the entire drop is repelled from itself and turns into these tiny, beautiful droplets of water and food coloring. A question that has been asked on my YouTube channel recently is why do we study effects and principles that don't have any real world applications. So things like the Leiden frost effect that we covered a couple weeks back or the Marangoni effect, they can't really be used in our day-to-day -day lives currently right now. Well, there's no such thing as a independent breakthrough in science or in physics. 
To paraphrase Isaac Newton, who was paraphrasing a lot of other people, if he can see farther, it's because he was standing on the shoulders of giants. We're studying these effects today because we have no idea what the future applications might be. So we're going to figure all this stuff out so in the past, we can be just one little layer before that massive breakthrough, whatever that breakthrough may be. So cool! I love the patterns. They're actually a lot smaller than what you see on the camera, but the effect is just amazing. If you liked what you saw, we have new videos coming out every week, so make sure you subscribe. We are Destructive Creativity for us. We're gonna say bye! <laughs> <laughs>